Damien, thank you so much for being here. Let's get right to it. I, I guess the, the real questions a lot of our audience has with regard to the small business aspect here is how you came upon Move and how you came upon this notion or idea that this is a product, this is a venture that you would want to be a part of, attach your name to, and put your hard-earned money into. Well, it came about because Nate Jones and I are, are really good friends. Um, and it was something that, that he brought to me, but I I never attached myself to anything that I don't feel a genuine connection to. And this is something that I feel is extremely necessary um, in sports, but especially in youth sports. As somebody who, you know, has experienced multiple foot injuries, um, I've had a broken foot just because of how, how flat my foot is and the lack of support in my shoes and how often I change shoes and how often I trained and played. And I've also experienced plantar fasciitis from a lack of support, you know, in the way that I play the game and, and train and the movement inside of my shoes and things like that. So um, just looking at the culture of youth sports now, you see these kids having personal trainers and, you know, they train in every single day at five, six, seven years old. In these AAU tournaments, they traveling all over the country, you know, three, four games a day sometimes in all these tournaments. And, um, I just feel like it's extremely important for them to get ahead on their foothill. Um, it's something that I feel like a lot of guys uh, before me and in the area that I've come up in, you know, could have really benefit from paying closer attention to our foothill because it's, it's ultimately the most important thing to us. You know, we can do nothing without healthy feet as athletes. And like I said, these kids, what they put their bodies through and um, the time that they're putting into, you know, wanting to be successful in sports, it's going to become even more important for them. So me understanding that, I felt like it was something that um, was authentic to me, something that's necessary for me to this day in my career, but also something that um, I could be a part of that will be uh, important for, for younger generations and kids coming up. You know, it'll be uh, for their benefit. Uh, and I think it's something that's, you know, that's really necessary and really strong. So it was a, it was a pretty easy call. I mean, easy call is one thing, but there's also a, an economic motivation, not just to being an investor in something, but also to, to seeing what the, the market is for this. What it comes down to, as you point out, if, if kids, if young adults can stay healthier longer, that also helps extend possibly a professional playing career and by extension, possible paychecks, more paychecks and more, more economic impact down the line. Is this something yeah. that you feel like that, that, that could happen because of the move in Soul product? Definitely. I mean, I think it's, it's definitely one of those things where um, it's a part of a, a game of chess. You know, you just connected the dots for me by um, the longevity, being able to just extend your career um, by taking care of your feet. But also for uh, just think about how many young athletes uh, deal with injuries, you know, in middle school and high school and in college, and it actually doesn't even allow them to get to the point where they have a successful career to to make money or to continue to play, whether that's in NBA or NFL or overseas or, or whatever. Um, so it's, that's why I'm saying it's more important right now because of how active they are, how much time they spend training and playing in games and, and just the types of movements. You know, all of these games are just getting faster and faster. And, you know, the, the changing of direction and things like that, you know, you, you're seeing more and more injuries, um, especially to, to the feet. So um, I think it's not only important for uh, athletes to extend their careers and give themselves the best chance to continue to make money, but I think to just get to the point where you're actually making money, to get to the point where you can see where you, where you can actually go in your sport, because kids is experiencing a lot more injuries now. And I think it's because of the, the pounding and the lack of awareness around not just foot health, but, you know, overall health too. So Damien, one of the things that a lot of business owners, small, medium, and large look towards is that total addressable market, right? Like how big could this product be? What could the distribution be like? When it comes to professional athletes and, and those who are at the elite, say high school to college levels, you're talking about a fairly small population. But this is something that you could envision becoming much larger in terms of distribution. What exactly is the strategy for how you get the most out of the people that this kind of product can reach? And what's, what's the strategy behind that distribution kind of, uh, at least, philosophy? 
I mean, well, to me, like I said, it's, it's so many kids in youth sports. That's a huge market alone. Um, and then you look at professional sports. Even around our league alone, I'm seeing guys constantly wearing, you know, moving soles. Um, all my teammates wear. Um, and I, I also think it's, it's something to be said about people who work jobs where they just on their feet all day. Like, there's a, a all-day insole that you just put in that I wear every day. I put it in my shoes, and it's um, just just for the comfort. You know, it's um, great for foot health. People just all standing on their feet all day, massage therapists, barbers. Product differentiation, Damien, is such a huge thing when it comes to these types of things. How do you position your brand, and how do you kind of pitch that story so that people look towards the move insole versus, say, some of the other competitors that are out there? Well, I think with move insoles is, is specifically for, you have, you have ones made specifically for sport, and then you have some specifically for just, you know, all day purposes, which is what I was speaking on, the massage therapists, the, the barbers, um, the bus drivers, the hairstylists, you know, just for that crowd of people. So I think because it's specific to those things and it serves a purpose to those things is it separates it and i also think because of the you look at the um the aau culture you look at the nba culture um i think because of the people that would be represented representing it the people that you would see supporting it um you need those people to to vouch for the product you know you, the the product has to speak for itself when it comes to those people and then when they see who's behind it you know who's wearing or putting moving so in their shoes and walking around and moving so is this i think that's where um the competitive advantage comes in when you let it speak for itself with how many people and and what people are actually um using them all right so there's also a different angle when it comes to the way that the stories are told around products these days over the last 10, 15, arguably 20 years, uh, digital channels and, and specifically social media have become such a huge component of uh, product development and advertisement and everything else. H how important is a social media strategy to, to, to move in souls to you? And, and how exactly do you kind of build on that? Do you have to have people like you who are influencer types out there? Or, or is there a more grassroots approach? W what exactly is that kind of digital strategy or social media strategy along the lines for which you're thinking for move? I think you definitely have to have uh, a presence with social media because it's it's important for everything. Everybody's there, you know. Everybody's always clicking. Everybody's always scrolling. So you have to have a presence, and I think it has to be like you said, from a um, a person of influence, and uh, that's why I speak on you know the AAU culture. You know, you got kids, you know, fourteen, fifteen years old with millions of followers, and then you obviously go to the NBA level, and we all have millions of followers. We all have people that follow us, but. For me specifically, um, I think an advantage is uh, the fact that everything I've, I've ever done has always been in line with, with who I am and authenticity. So if this product wasn't, you know, what I say it is or what I believe it to be, then I wouldn't speak on it. I wouldn't support it on the level that I have. So um, I think because my following is what it is and I've we've been able to bring many others in, um, and we've been able to be in front of kids and to be with so many different groups of people and for them to support it and for us to be putting it out there, um, I think it'll register that way. And um, when something is not fluff and when people can believe what you're putting out there and people can value it differently based on who it's coming from and the level of support that they're giving it, I think that'll definitely be to our advantage. So um, I've had a lot of success banking on, on that um, in many things, not just this, but um, I'll count on it in this situation once again, and I think it'll it'll be a, a reason for, you know, the success. And Damien, we've just got a few moments left here. Before I let you go, you talked a little bit and, and spoke about the evolution of, of the game and, and how younger people are getting involved. The, the game of professional basketball also looks different today than it did 10, 15, 20 years ago. The playoff structure is a little bit different. The way that players are coming in the league are a little bit different. I, I wonder, just before we let you go, the state of professional basketball, do you like where it's headed and, and do you think there's more growth ahead? Um, I, I definitely 
think it's headed in a great place um, performance-wise. Um, but the thing that I would like to see is just getting control of the, um, the health side of it because the game is so fast. Guys are, are so big, and you got these big, strong bodies moving back and forth, you know, cutting and changing speeds and in the air, you know, jumping higher and higher, running faster and faster. So the injuries are, are increasing. So I think the, the one thing I would like to see us address is, like, you know, what um, what part of the game or what what about the game is, you know, opening up this window of opportunity for people to get hurt so often, you know, so we can have better health. And like we talked about earlier, just try to continue to extend guys' careers um, so that the game stays strong and, you know, guys aren't compromising their health to, um, I guess, sustain the kind of play that we've had.